Yeah, you saw the title and thumbnail of this video. My channel's too small for some bespoke post ad read, so let's just get into it. A little context first for people thinking I'm only going to be on one side of this argument. As of the time of me publishing this video, I've put roughly 21 hours into PAL World, and I think there's a great base for a game here that could get even better with more expanded content. Of course, with it being an early access, it's hard to say where it'll be a year from now, but so far it's good fun and even better with friends, albeit a lot of issues with pathfinding and content to do out in the open world. On the flip side, I've put 71 hours into Pokemon Violet and completed both the Teal Mask and Indigo Disc expansions, and I hated the game more and more with each passing hour. I put up a video closer to launch about the bugs I ran into during my time playing the base game, and things haven't gotten any better with the DLC. In fact, performance somehow got worse despite the smaller map sizes, and Game Freak has certainly not put fixing any of the game's bigger issues on their priority list when there's $35 DLC to sell and an epilogue locked behind a mystery gift for reasons I can't even begin to fathom. Yes, one disappointing expansion is more expensive than the other game we're talking about today. I like Legends Arceus well enough, but much like Pal World, I feel like there's a good base there that just needs more to do, and brilliant Diamond was. With enough time in the oven, all these games could be much, much better. But Pal World is selling itself as an early access title with at least a year of updates, and the Pokemon games sell themselves as full releases that need to be rushed out to market to meet merchandising deadlines, so pardon me if I sound a bit bitter, but I think even the most diehard of Pokemon's fans will agree that there's more than enough room for improvement for a $60 game with a $35 expansion pass. Does it sound like I have a bias against Pokemon and Game Freak? Yeah, it sure does, but understand it comes from a place of loving the franchise since I was a kid, knowing it could be better, and not just blindly accepting what's being shoveled out because it's Pokemon! I also hold no delusions that Power World is going to make Game Freak suddenly shape up like some people online seem to. Why fix what isn't broken enough to sell 23 million units? Let me get something else out of the way too. I'm going to be showing a few tweets from here on out and I will be blocking the usernames of most of them. Do. Not. Go after. Any of them. For any reason. I repeat. Do not. Pocket Pair reportedly received death threats according to their PR manager and CEO. And over what? Some PAL designs that are most certainly inspired by other Pokemon? I didn't think we could get pettier than going after a voice actress for just doing her job because her fictional character killed another fictional character. But here we are. Think about how there's a real person at the end of that and grow up. If, for whatever reason, you want to be credited for your tweet being in this video, please let me know in a comment below and I'll add it to the video's description afterwards. You can also feel free to email me at hiddengemsreviews at yahoo.com. I'm mostly doing this because the internet will internet at the end of the day, and I don't know how many people will actually see this video. Okay, okay, the point of the video. Did Pal World use AI to create its creatures or game assets? There's a couple more allegations being thrown around, so we'll just get them all out of the way. In order, one, did Pocket Pair use generative AI to create monsters for Pal World? Two, did Pocket Pair use NFTs or crypto in their games? 3. Did Pocket Pair steal models from other Pokemon games and kitbash them together to make their pals? 4. Did Pocket Pair abandon their other early access titles? Some of these sections are lengthier than others, so they'll be timestamped. If you don't feel like watching the whole thing, feel free to skip to the end here, where I sum everything up. I understand you might be a very busy person and just want the Cliff Notes version without any actual research, which is exactly what led us here in the first place. So, number one, the AI allegations. There's a lot of users on Twitter, no, I'm not calling it X, claiming that Pal World obviously uses AI in its designs due to the similar look of its pals compared to other Pokemon. Specifically, the AI was used to scrape the artwork and data sets from Pokemon games to generate them. You might have seen this image floating around from the internet showing all these different comparisons. You can definitely see some, uh, heavy inspiration in some of them, that's for sure. But others are just... Do you think Nintendo owns the trademark to make cartoon ponies, penguins, and sheep? I've seen the Lamball one get thrown around a lot too, but I remember seeing cute sheep designs years ago on birthday cards and clip art sites before Sword and Shield's first trailer went up. Heck, I used this picture here for a Flash video I made as a school project back in 2010. Now you, as a sensible viewer not plagued with internet brain rot, might look at these designs and go, okay, some of them are borderline ripoff, but... Where does AI come into it? Good question. And the answer is, it doesn't. Here's where the allegations started. 
Back in 2022, Pocket Pair released a game into early access called AI Art Imposter. It's a Jackbox Party Pack style game where you're given a theme and the other players have to find out who, among you, is the imposter, not following it. Art's created using prompts that generate images similar to Dolly or Mid Journey, and it's still in early access since the making of this video. I have no clue what model the game uses to generate those images, and I'm not about to buy it to find out. But other users in the discussion boards claim it uses Stable Diffusion, an image generation model by Stability.ai. I've also never played the game myself, but apparently one of their other titles, Craftopia, has AI-generated text when you hit Q to talk to NPCs, and it only works when you're connected to the internet. From this Steam discussion board I've read, it doesn't affect the game in any way other than just seemingly connecting to an AI chatbot and answering prompts in the same way something like ChatGPT does. I can't find any videos of this in action or if it works on the Xbox release, but there are these screenshots from this tweet showing it working. So it's pretty clear that Pocket Pair loves using generative AI. The company's CEO, Takuro Mitsobe, has also expressed on Twitter in the past that they're quite passionate in using it too. In particular, this image keeps getting thrown around as evidence that they must have used it for Pal World. I mean, look, it clearly shows them comparing generated mods with Nintendo's official art. But if you scroll down just one more tweet, this is the CEO responding to BuzzFeed's data scientist Max Wolf, who used a version of Rue Dali fed official Pokemon images. There's nothing here but Takuro responding to a bunch of AI generated images, which, let's be honest, we were all doing back in 2021 before worries about AI art theft really started to take off. Sure, there might be more evidence if any of these generated mods made their way into the game, but they didn't. And that's where the comparison ends. People online are just drawing from these examples and going, See? Since, since they used AI in the games, and the CEO really likes it, th they had to have used it for this one too! Never mind the fact that Pal World's first launch trailer was released back in June of 2021, and clearly shows the same monster designs used back before generative AI really hit off. There's also these videos from the company's CEO showing the game in development before and after the switch from Unity to Unreal 4. Same monster designs are here too. Also, if we're not buying games based on CEOs loving generative AI content, you might want to stop buying anything from Square Enix, as Takashi Kiryu loves the stuff, and has tripled down on the use of NFTs and, I quote, intend to be aggressive in applying AI and other cutting-edge technologies to both our content development and our publishing functions. Yay! Now, is that definitive proof that Pal World isn't using AI? Nope. In fact, there are things that are still a little suspicious, like the main artist being rejected by over a hundred other companies previously before working at Pocket Pair. But really, I'd like to see a proper translation of this blog post the CEO did, especially since people are basing a lot of info off of, well, Google translated text. I completely understand people not trusting generative AI tech, but you're trusting what you're reading by clicking translate this text on Twitter and other websites? Anyways, there's another reason I currently believe the game isn't using generative AI. Back on January 9th of this year, Steam made a blog post discussing their policies on using AI in games you submit to Steam. In particular is a new section of their content survey where you have to disclose in detail how AI is being used, whether it's pre-generated or live-generated, with each getting its own guidelines. For pre-generated content, you also have to show Valve that whatever AI model you're using has no illegal or infringing content. Any disclosure you make also shows up on the game's store page, so people know exactly what's involved. And as of the making of this video, there's no notices on Pal World's Steam page about the use of AI in any capacity. Steam also hasn't said if this policy change is going to apply retroactively, so games like AI Art Imposter, Square Enix's AI Tech Preview, The Portopia Serial Murder Case, and High on Life, which used Mid Journey for some of its posters and other assets, currently don't have those labels. I'm also unsure of Microsoft's stance on submitting games using pre-generated AI art, outside of their recent post about using in-world AI for games, which involves using it for dialogue, story, and quest design, according to a blog post on their site. Microsoft's also doubled down on the use of it with Azure, OpenAI, and Copilot, but I'd like to hear from any developers who publish games on Xbox talk about its use when submitting a game for approval. So, conclusion time. Does Pal World use AI-generated art for its monsters? No. At most, I think these are just some legally distinct, good old-fashioned knockoffs, like what someone's currently selling over on Etsy right now. 
But the recent trend of AI art theft and people making comparisons online has led to the belief that it has to be generative designs just scrapped from Nintendo's art. It's the biggest buzzword in the tech industry right now, but so far, as of the publishing of this video, there's no conclusive proof of its use during development, and Takura Mitsobe has gone on record to tell people to stop sending their artists death threats over what is at most speculation. Nintendo also doesn't seem to be bothered. Pal World has existed since 2021, and they haven't even thrown up as much of a light rumble. You know, this Nintendo? They did, however, go after a modder named Toasted Shoes, who made a mod that swaps Pal World's models with Pokemon. Their video was given a DMCA strike on Twitter, and they're laying low for the time being. That of course begs the question, if Nintendo, one of the most litigious game developers ever, was quick to jump the gun on this, then why aren't they as quick to do so for Pal World itself? Mitsobe has also stated in an interview with Automaton that, quote, We make our games very seriously, and we have absolutely no intention of infringing upon the intellectual property of other companies. I'm sure someone's already typing out a comment about how Pocket Pair could be lying, or how Nintendo's only now going to go after them because of how popular the game is, which would make it more suspicious why they didn't just sue them before, but again, that's speculation. If it comes out after this video that Nintendo's threatening to sue them into the ground, I'll be sure to make a follow-up. But as it stands right now, the AI claims are bogus, and others like this article from Ryan Broderick over at Garbage Day have pointed out how the AI scare is leading people to believe that this is something the tech can even do in the first place. I'd highly recommend reading the entire thing, you can find a link for it down below. Now, if you don't want to support a company whose CEO is clearly a tech bro in love with the idea of AI and NFTs, then that's completely understandable. Just keep in mind there's a lot of companies out there you should also not be supporting then. Speaking of NFTs, Part 2, NFT and Crypto Allegations. This section will be much shorter and isn't directly related to Pal World, but let's give an overview. Pocket Pair and NFTs. The only evidence I found about this was a tweet from Pocket Pair's Craftopia Twitter account, asking if people would want them. The response was, uh, pretty universally negative, and rightfully so. As one user pointed out, why the heck should they even consider it when the game has a bunch of other issues that need to be resolved? And Pocket Pair responded that they're just focusing on making updates to Craftopia. Nothing else came from this, so it's safe to assume that they backed off from the idea. As for crypto allegations? Again, they're true for the company's CEO, just not for Pal World. Before founding Pocket Pair Incorporated, Takura Mitsobe was a lead engineer and founded CoinCheck in 2014, a wallet exchange for cryptocurrencies. But again, if you don't want to support a company whose CEO is for crypto, there's a whole list of companies you don't want to be buying anything from. You know Amazon owns Amazon Web Services, right? They have a 6% usage rate. That's 6% of every single website, which equates to nearly 66 million websites. And out of the most websites used online, 53% of them are AWS. But wait! AWS has blockchain APIs to let you make your own Web3 applications. Well, that's a company I don't want to support. But I guarantee at least 90% of the people watching this video right now bought something last month for Christmas through Amazon. Look, th this is all just a dumb joke using mostly false equivalencies, and I personally have a disdain for crypto, Web3, and NFTs myself. But people on social media will sit there and pretend they're actively against Pal World just because the CEO doesn't hide his tech bro side. No, they're against it because they're on the internet and already picked a side in an argument and are finding excuses to stay on that side for clout, because people like when the little heart has a big number next to it, not because they have any particular belief. If they truly didn't want to support a company that's for crypto crap they didn't like, they wouldn't be complaining about it online. They'd be in a field, pushing a plow, because that's how much they'd be giving up. Let's move on to part three. Kit bashing and stolen models. So you might have heard the term kit bashing and may not know what it stands for. Kit bashing, specifically in the art world, is a term that started with people taking model kits and slapping different parts from different kits together, hence its name. People who work on 3D modeling like to use the term as well, and it fits pretty well. Modeling can get difficult, so sometimes it's easier to just get a huge library of existing models and fuse them together to make all new ones. It's also the name of a massive 3D asset library, primarily called Kitbash 3D, which sells assets for use for movies and games. With the definitions out of the way, let's pull out that huge image again. A lot of the comparisons show how it appears that Power World's creatures just picked a bunch of random parts from other Pokemon and just fused them into one. And yeah, I won't even deny that's what they did. Just look at some of these. 
But others online have gone a step further and are insisting that the models were just ripped from Pokemon titles like Scarlet and Violet or Sword and Shield. This is a field I've got no experience in, as I've just done stuff to make RPG Maker games like sprite work, music, coding, and action script in C+, when we still use those things. <laughs> so these are just my views on this as an outside observer. I'm going to show some users and their names on Twitter for this next section, and I'm going to reiterate this again. Do not be a scumbag to these people. If you do, you are scum of the earth, and you need to do literally anything else productive with your pathetic life. And there isn't a single person on this planet that'll ever support what you do. Anyways, you might have seen that big tweet from a former Blizzard game designer, Eric Covington, posting videos from another user on how closely some of Pal World's models match ones from Pokemon. As a funny aside to this, they had another post where they said that the AI-generated Pokemon Misobe tweet was the smoking gun, showing that Pal World must have used an AI prompt. I responded back to that post by saying, it's not. If you scroll down just one more post, you can see this is just the CEO responding to BuzzFeed's Max Wolf using Rudali to generate a bunch of Pokemon using official Pokemon art. Just another thing people are taking out of context. Shortly after making that post, they deleted their tweet. And the only reason I still have a screenshot of it is because I had it open in another tab while doing research. Here it is, getting deleted in real time. Very funny. But instead of just saying, whoops, I must have gotten that wrong, they just removed any evidence of it existing because people on the internet would rather clout chase and just pretend they never said it to save face. Moving on. A lot of people seem to be placing their trust in this post because it's clearly highlighting how similar they are. Must be case closed, right? I mean, this one in particular just keeps getting spread around everywhere, so it must be true. Now, instead of just wiping our hands clean and hanging up the mission accomplished banner, why don't we actually look at the original tweets? Enter user Biofrog, who made the original comparison videos. Their account was made this month, and their only posts are comparing Pal World and Pokemon models to each other. That stinks as someone wanting to talk about this, but not commit to using their main Twitter account to address it, just in case the discussions don't turn out the way they want. According to Biofrog, these model comparisons were taken from ripping the models from Pal World using FModel, a tool specifically made for finding and ripping files from Unreal Engine games, and Pokemon model rips from the model's resource from both Sword and Shield and Scarlet and Violet, and comparing them by converting them for use into Blender. Bio also says in another tweet that they haven't played the game, which raises another red flag, because that means we don't know how much of the actual game they've seen, or how the models, rigs, and animations are incorporated into the game itself. We also don't know WHERE they got the models from. It could be that they purchased a copy of the game and ripped them without playing it, but... Alright, I'm done with this particular rabbit hole, let's move on. To Cinderace and Verdash side by side. The comparisons start out simple, saying that while there are some things that look similar, they aren't exactly full matchups. But then their next comparison, they're just like, this pal from hashtag pal world, seems like it was probably a rip of Superior and Primarina from hashtag Pokemon. This is also where this picture that's been making its rounds on the internet comes from, and yeah, I'd say this is where the strongest evidence of possible model ripping comes from, except as another user points out, they really don't match up all that much. Oh, sure, the shape and pointy bits are definitely the same, but to say it's a one-to-one -one copy of the model is just disingenuous at best. It's more likely that the game's modeler used it as a reference and made their own based off of that. The back and forth just keeps going! This one seems like it uses Gujar and Quagsire models, tail and arms, followed by another tweet saying, the hands are also somewhat close, but they also have some finger differences, hashtag Palworld. This is a maybe to me. So is it the same or not? One where they compare Galarian Meowth's eyes, which, are we just saying Palworld ripped off a circle and an oval? Did Game Freak steal the Cheshire's cat's design from Alice in Wonderland for Meowth? You decide! There's this one where they're saying this Sobble and Doomud one has to be a rip, but as other users point out below, the meshes and the polygons are clearly different in both images, which you can see because you have eyeballs. Another one saying, maybe they're brothers? Showing a Lycanroc model and what I believe is Dire Howl from the game? Anyways, they immediately followed that tweet with, their bodies are similar, but the hair isn't that similar. They also posted these side-by-sides, which I agree, they aren't that similar. A follow-up tweet shows another side-by-side -side of the cones highlighted, and a number, 8,886 verts. 
If you're not into 3D modeling, you might be confused by what that means, but to keep it simple, that's these dots on the model, or vertices as they're called. Another user named Lawa Leith pointed out, because people were getting confused, that the Lycanroc model doesn't have 8,886 vertices. It has 3,167, so these screenshots are actually the combined total of both models. So this number that's prominently displayed in the images means nothing. But it's confusing people in the replies that know nothing about 3D modeling, and they're drawing conclusions on an issue that doesn't exist. Hi, uh, me from editing this, because uh, more stuff just keeps popping up as I keep going. Uh, Bio later made another tweet a couple days later, uh, apologizing and clarifying that the vertices are for both models, and that they didn't think people would focus on the big numbers right in the middle of the images instead of the highlighted cones. I, I just need to point this out. If you are making comparison screenshots, trying to prove if the models are ripped or not, it might be prudent to explain what exactly people are looking at so they don't get confused. Another user asked for a comparison between Lunaris and Lopunny, while another chimed in that they should also compare it to Mewtwo Y, and Bio finds that they aren't the same model and neither is the Lopunny. And lastly, just so I'm not here cherry picking all day, here's a video of them comparing Salazza with Lavander saying, hold on a second, there's a Salaz under that heart mesh. I feel like all those extra polygons could have been deleted. Weird! Basically, they're saying the polygons underneath the heart-shaped fluff of fur on Lavander shouldn't need to exist, which... Sure, whatever you say, you're the expert. But they immediately followed up with another tweet saying, Not close enough to say, ah, but it's kind of interesting. This one's the biggest reach for me, because... Come on, just, just look at these. Drew, you're looking too far into this! Just accept that there's similarities and move on! Okay, I will. Once again, much like with the AI comparisons, some of these do clearly look inspired by Pokemon, and I think you'd be a fool to say otherwise. But in terms of them just flat out being stolen models, the examples people are parading online are from a brand new user who says they're doing this because, and I quote, I think it's disgusting how much Pal World glorifies animal abuse. Very funny. So either a troll or they take this seriously. Bio keeps flip-flopping on if they're taken from Pokemon games or not, and people are basing their entire arguments on that fact. Bio's comparisons are disingenuous at best, and shouldn't be taken as solid evidence. Look, I'm an idiot when it comes to this stuff. I've never used Blender or even attempted 3D modeling in my life. The most I've ever done is I played around with Autodesk on a friend's desktop and made shitty Far Cry 2 maps. But I'm also not enough of an idiot to be looking at this one example from one person whose credentials we don't know and say, yep, that's a ripoff. It's just reactionary nonsense. I'm not even doing this because I'm trying to defend Pal World. If it turns out that they did in fact steal their models and Nintendo's lawyers show them no mercy, I'll be right there along with everyone else going, well, turns out that one was true all along. I'd actually love to have someone who is experienced with 3D modeling download the Pal World and Pokemon models yourself and let me know your thoughts. Here's my email again, hiddengemsreviews at yahoo.com. Please, please, please get in touch with me. I'd be more than happy to learn something about using Blender from you by comparing them yourself. The point is this. I think more research is required, and I think it needs to be done by either Nintendo themselves or just more than one person. There's too much back and forth, and nothing has come from any of it. As of right now, there's no conclusive proof that these models were taken from Game Freak. There's also another point to this. I need to get the hell off Twitter. And finally, we reach the last section of this video, Pocket Pair's other titles being abandoned early access games. I'm keeping this part very short, because that last section has winded me, and I want to release this video sometime this month. So let's go down Pocket Pair's titles one by one on Steam. First up is Over Dungeon, a roguelike deck builder slash tower defense game. This actually looks like something I'd pick up and play, and I'm surprised it's the first time I'm hearing about it, because I can't get enough of roguelike deck builders. But the game's status? Finished! With an update back in August of 2023 that added Craftopia characters and cards to the game. Not much else to say, since it's not in early access. Next up, Craftopia. This is the one people keep pointing out, and it looks like a blend of Genshin Impact and Breath of the Wild mixed with crafting and survival mechanics, using a whole bunch of Unreal Engine assets. I've also never played this one myself, but this game has existed since 2020 and is still in early access as of the making of this video. I find it funny how some of the enemy designs, even in the screenshots here, are, uh, 
pretty inspired by Breath of the Wild, but again, Nintendo hasn't taken the ban hammer on it. I, I mean, come on, just look at this trailer. Nice Akira bike slide. I wonder if you can actually do that in the game. You can actually see how much Craftopia's DNA made it into Pal World just from certain sections of gameplay here. Anyways, I saw it thrown around on Twitter that this game was abandoned, but they've had consistent updates every single month, with a roadmap showing what's happening in the short and long term for the game, and was updated as recent as the 22nd of this month. So I don't see where exactly the game has been abandoned. I think that sentiment's coming from Xbox players who haven't received any of these new updates yet, but Xbox's certification process is notorious for being long and arduous, which also seems to be currently holding back updates for Pal World. I remember reading a blog post from Undead Labs about getting State of Decay on Xbox 360 back in 2013, and if it's still anything like that, I imagine it's a royal pain in the ass to get anything pushed. This leaves us with AI Art Imposter. Yep, this one's still in early access, and its last update was in March 2023. Looking at the Steam charts, there's a whopping 5 people playing it right now with a staggering 24 hour peak of 29. With nearly a year since its last update and the discussions board being a ghost town compared to other games, I think it's safe to say that the recent success of Pal World will have this one get unceremoniously dropped sooner rather than later, but out of all of our other examples, this is the one that's most likely to stay abandoned. So by my count, that's one out of four games? And even that one could still receive updates if anyone at Pocket Pair cares to. This is the section that confuses me the most because all it took was a slight glance at those game's Steam pages to see that there's nothing to suggest they've abandoned Craftopia, but that hasn't stopped people from declaring it so. People are just happy to spread misinformation because, once again, it needs to fit a narrative so that they can bash the Pokemon clone they don't like. Conclusion time! Here's the too long didn't watch version if you just decided to skip ahead. Did Pocket Pair use generative AI to create monsters for Pal World? No. They've used AI in two other games that they've worked on, and the tweet people are throwing around has been taken out of context. Pocket Pair's CEO, Takuru Mitsube, is a big time tech bro, but you'd be hard pressed to find a CEO that isn't. Did Pocket Pair use NFTs or crypto in their games? Never. It's yet another tweet that's been taken out of context, and it appears they steer clear to the idea as quickly as it came in their heads due to negative backlash. Did Pocket Pair steal models from other Pokemon games and kitbash them together to make their pals? Unlikely, but there's some pretty clear evidence that they took heavy inspiration from them. We'll see what the future holds, but if Nintendo was going to sue them, I think they would have just done it back in 2021. Bio's comparisons are lackluster and shouldn't be taken as fact, and just as I was about to wrap up editing this video, they came out and admitted that they scaled the models and that there were imprecise comparisons. Now again, this isn't definitive proof that the models aren't ripped because you can just scale models to whatever sizes you want, but it is yet another reason that you shouldn't trust just one source about this. Did Pocket Pair abandon their other early access games? Possibly one. AI Art Imposter hasn't received any updates in nearly a year, and has an incredibly low player count, while Overdungeon is released and Craftopia has consistently received updates monthly. And that's it. I'm not gonna have some long-winded discussion to wrap it all up because this video was too damn long and I typed up the entire script for it in one 12-hour session, with five of those hours being research. Yeah, research. Please consider it the next time you want to say something dumb on the internet. Does this exonerate Pocket Pair from just blatantly copying other games wholesale? No. But people are still enjoying those games regardless, and hey, if Nintendo doesn't want to fill in the niche of having a Breath of the Wild or Pokemon-inspired game on PC and Xbox, someone else was always going to step in and do it for them. It's clearly working for Pocket Pair and Pal World, since as of the making of this video, it sold over 7 million copies in just 5 days. I don't generally do this, but here's that usual call to action crap. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because YouTube also likes it when the numbers go up. I'm getting the hell off social media for a week. I suggest you all do the same.